Hi, I'm Sung Ray. I'm something else. Here at Black Girl Soul, a podcast where we discuss the Asian dramas we love from a Black female perspective. We are looking to be entertained, to learn about other cultures, and share our passion for these shows. Welcome. Welcome back to another episode of Black Girl Soul with something else and Song Ray. Today, we're going to be talking to you guys about School Nurse Files on Netflix. Something else, did you get a chance to take a look at any of them? I watched the first episode at your behest, but other than the first episode, I was good. I knew before I watched kind of how the feel was going to be, and I was not surprised, so... <laughs> Tell me what made you interested in the drama <laughs> and why you went into watching it. Alrighty, well, we'll just go ahead and keep it 100. I watched because of Mom Ju Hoop. That's the only reason I was interested in this drama. <laughs> I had no clue about the plot for real. I really, I mean, I knew it was a school nurse. I really didn't know what was going to, what it was going to entail. I knew much of nothing because I don't like, you know, Something else is our official. She is going to go in. She's going to read. She's going to find reviews. She does all of those like research points. I am the one who blindly walks in and goes, oh, fuck, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I did. I walked in. And when I walked in, I was like, okay, yes, now Juhuk is back again. I'm so excited because I, you know, just really like him and I wanted to see another drama he was in. But when I got in there, I was like, what am I watching? I was just so confused. That's all I can tell you. I was confused. So the summary was weird. And then I must have seen on Netflix, like the trailer. And the minute I saw the slime, I was good. I was good. And I'm not even like, I'm squeamish, but I'm not that squeamish, right? But it seemed like it was based on a webtoon and like it was kind of cartoonish in nature and like silly and a little bit just a little bit it reminded me of Japanese kind of not kitty shows but like the Japanese shows can be silly or over the top and that's what I kind of felt about this I didn't think it was for grown folks I mean, I, th I thought it was like for teenagers or something. So I just knew I wasn't its target audience and I kept it moving. And then when you came back talking about it, I was like, did I miss something about this show? So that's when I watched it. And the feeling I got was, it was just otherworldly. It was weird. It was like the feeling of it wasn't like the kind of romantic Korean dramas, right? And it felt very, like it was set in the 1980s or something. There was something about it that did not feel like today and where the setting was at a school. It was just, it just threw me off in so many ways. And then the music was like, like 1980s robotic music, kind of cool, but eerie and weird. So that's how I knew it was this kind of sci-fi, otherworldly thing. And then the lead female, she was off. Like her movements, everything about her was just, just ain't like he wasn't right either. And it wasn't because he had a disability for real. Like he, he wasn't a hundred percent there. They were, they were both like out of this world. And then I didn't like, let me just keep it 100. Cause now I'm on a roll. I didn't like that. They over exaggerated his limp like okay we know you have a limp dude and I don't know what happened in the show beyond that first episode but even his pants that's why I thought he was from the 1980s he was wearing some straight up like what do you call them those were wide leg pants like he didn't even need to do that he had no cool there was no cool in his wardrobe his stuff everything it was it was mm -mm. it wasn't for me it was it was not for me you tell me what you well, think I'm going Sun to Ray. first back it up and tell you that it is a novel so the okay. novel was written by Jung Serang and I hope I'm saying that right but Jung J U N G S E R A N G Jung Serang um and it was published in 2015 she's also the screenwriter who 
wrote the screenwriter for this. Um, it was only six episodes, so I in my head figured I could bash this out. Well, I started and I got up to episode four, like maybe the first ten minutes of episode four, and I was like, okay, I I'm I'm confused. I tried to give room because you know I'm good for a drop of the drama, and I decided I don't want to be the drop of drama girl. So like I want to try to at least stick it out, figure out what's going on a little bit somewhere to give myself something to work with. And I go and I start reading reviews from people on Twitter and people are giving it all kind of accolades and I'm going, maybe I missed something. Maybe there's something I don't understand because truly there was a whole lot I didn't understand. No, this was not my genre. And I happen to like fantasy, but this was like over the top fantasy for me. I couldn't get with I, I tried as I watched the whole thing, but yeah, mm. I, I, I was lost to the to the nth degree on very many fronts. So like, even one of the questions I asked was, "What was the excessive laughter about?" Because I could not figure it out as the show goes on. And these are pause for the cause. These are spoilers. So if you have not seen the drama, please be mindful. We're talking about it. We're calling out the Easter eggs and everything else. So if you didn't see it, it's on you. You know, in advance, these are spoilers. But so, like, throughout the whole drama, there's this laughing thing going on. And so I think you may have seen in first episode where they have the announcements and they're standing up and they're saying something about being good for my body. And then at the end, they everybody laughs. So I just thought, you know, maybe that was just to give us this whole sense of this was a different type of school. They're odd. No other word to use for this. They're odd. Mm -hmm. But as it kept going on throughout the entire drama, there would be places where they just have this excessive laughter happening. And I'm going, what the heck is this? Well, somebody said they explained it. And I'm like, hell, I must have missed it. Because how about I watch the whole thing? And I still am to this very second confused about what the hell were they laughing about? What was the laughter for? Was there some kind of endorphin release happening? Was something making them feel better because they were laughing? Like, yeah, I don't know. Um... It reminded me, it put me in the mindset now, just for those who don't know, in my real world, in my real life, I work with children and books are part of working with kids. And so there's these books called Wayside School and someone mentioned them. And I'm like, hell yeah, this is what that reminds me of. If Wayside School came to life, it'd be something like this or, or even a Lemony Snicket where there's just these things that happen that are just beyond normal per se and you're you're going with it so I couldn't go with it I tried to go with it as many times as I could I thought about it on varying levels I even tried to get a little philosophical with myself I still mm -mm. this just was not my drama I tried you you know what I applaud you because <laughs> because <laughs> I wasn't doing it when I saw those kids in the first episode like they had messed with some rock or something in the basement and all those kids started running in the same direction, like darn zombies. I was good. I was good. When I saw the dead folks turn into slime, I was like, why couldn't it be mist? Why couldn't it be smoke? Why does it have to be slime? Why is she got to be running around oh. a grown woman? Okay, mind you, <laughs> young adult with a darn plastic sword, like... Oh, it was it was for kids. Good. It was not for me. What'd you say? I said and a BB gun. Right, right. I understood the BB gun. I just didn't understand the sword. And she was straight up working that sword, which I fought her <laughs> for. But dude saw her in a basement waving <laughs> that sword around. And somehow maybe he started to think, oh yeah, you look good. I, I could check for you. Like there was somewhere he, he was odd too. I was good. I was good. It wasn't for me. Yes. And, and see, I am. A, she told him that she was doing Zumba. I almost fell out. Dying. Girl, I was like, she, man, man. It's not that I didn't think it could be, it, you know, I thought it could be funny. It wasn't for me. Um, right. It just wasn't like, if I want to see, I'm trying to think, um, there was, um, this movie, not a movie. Mm, I'm tripping. There was this TV show called, I think master, um, of the sun. If I'm getting it correctly. I mean, I've seen, um, some 
yeah, Masters of the Sun or something like that. I've seen was it Master Sun? Master Sun or something like um Master Sun had G or uh So Juicy in it. So I think I'm saying his name right. Let me let me pull it up and then so correct G my Sub. speech. So G Sub. That's what it is. That's his name, I mean. Yes. That and one was okay, because I saw that as well. Yeah, Master Sun. I mean, some people call it different stuff, but Master Sun and I that was fantasy and that was odd and that had a little bit of, you know, like I it like had horror elements in it, like ghosts and stuff like that. And I don't mind that. I just I just need it to be for grown folks and not for kids. It just wasn't for me. I'm too grown for that. So the the difference, like Sung Ray said, is Sung Ray is fearless. She would do no research. Like it's whatever the thing is that turns on for me and kind of makes me go, nope, not that. Nope, not that. She's more likely to check it out. She's she's fearless like like that. We call her Dora the Explorer. She's gonna explore everything. I am not wasting my time. The minute I saw that the summary is talking about slime deuces, I kept it moving. So <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a lot that I'll be like, hmm, you know, I'll check out. But just because it's Korean and on Netflix doesn't mean I'm gonna watch it automatically. It's it's not gonna get my I mean, they will put it front and center. Like Netflix, they're straight up pimps. They will put what they want you to watch front and center over and over and over again. The minute you open up Netflix, you'll be seeing stuff that you did not pick, that you did not have any interest in. But they are putting it like on that big kind of slideshow for you to see right away. So I get it. I get kind of going for it. But well, I told you why. I told you why I watch. But do you wish you could get those hours back in life? I'm going to be honest. Yes, there was plenty of other dramas that I would have preferred to have been watching or dealing with. Like, I still am not caught up with Alice yet. I could have been catching up with Alice. Um, I wanted to finish watching uh, Do You Like Brahms? I did eventually, but, you know, those things could have been happening during those times that I spent hashing out and uh, binging uh, School Nurse Files. Yeah, that that wasn't my takeaway for the day. So did you like the Brahms show? Because I turned that down too, but people have been talking about it. Oh, I'm loving Do You Like Brahms? Yes, yes. It's my show. Can you give me a quick synopsis, like from your point of view? Because sometimes those um, summaries are for trash when they describe these shows. Okay, so right now what you have is you've got two musicians. One's a, a pianist the other a violinist he's a i'm not gonna say world renowned but he is known around the world he's gone to other countries to do performances and people know him um he is not top tier because they have consistently pointed out he lost a competition and that put him in bad rep, rep you know rep, bad reputation because he lost this competition in my opinion i don't understand how but you know hey it's not my world so i just roll with the drama in which case he's trying to like get himself back up where he was. And so he's on sabbatical during this time where he meets her. She's a, a violinist who is in school still and at the bottom of her game. She's last chair, she's last in class. She's just, it's, it's almost like with her violin, it's a passion, but it's not her gifting. She's not mm. gifted in it, but she likes it. So she keeps pursuing it. He, on the other hand, is gifted with the piano, but he's not finding it to be this like passion like she has. So they've had a few arguments per se, like they don't really argue, but you know, where one got a little bit at the other, but in which case she got mad at him because he made a comment about, you know, just because people have a gift for something doesn't necessarily mean they're supposed to run with it. She got mad because she was like, if I could be gifted in the violin, you know, do you understand what I could do? Da, 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 da. So they've met each other at this center and they're, you know, falling for each other. She likes him. She confessed first. He had this triangle. Girl, this thing got triangles, hexagons, wait, wait, angles. Wait. I just need to know a summary because I might watch it. You're giving me the whole thing. I, well, I'm not telling you the whole thing. I'm just giving you overall stuff, okay. to, you know, look for. But it has these varying people who are all intertwined because 
she liking somebody at the beginning that was liking. Well, he kind of liked her back, but he slept with her friend. Why her, are you telling me this stuff? Together. You know I want to watch it, right? I'm telling you because you're not going to know till you see them and know who they are. You don't know who I'm talking about. Right. That's but, her but... scene. His scene, he has a triangle going on that calls problems. And so them getting together means all these triangles start overflowing with each other. Okay. So that's why I'm sharing the triangle concept because they all begin to overlap and you don't get lost in it. You, you really don't. But it's just a matter of it's kind of fucking messy. There's no okay. way to put it. It's kind of messy. Okay. Well, I mean, I just wanted to get from somebody whose viewing habits I trust so that I know if it's like a waste of time or if it's like worth watching. Because sometimes I, I would say watch it. Okay. Yeah, because I watch a lot of different shows and types of shows and stuff flows in and out and I sometimes really just have to flash and burn and like cut stuff out I just don't have time and it's like I do other things I listen to music I read like right. you know what I'm saying and but, I was about to say you watch other shows as well where I'm solely doing Korean dramas right now like I, there's nothing else I'm watching before we end this episode I guess here's my next question what are you currently watching there are shows that are going on right now like lie after lie that I'm watching about the woman who's who uh, was convicted of her husband's death she had an abusive husband she ran away from him she was pregnant she wakes up he's dead they convict her she goes to prison she has to give up her child for adoption and when she gets out she's like where's my baby let me go find my child and and then she's fighting you know big wig people trying to like basically be next to her child i enjoyed that i want to watch what's wrong with secretary kim i can just never get to it i want to watch weightlifting fairy because everybody talks about it but I can never um, <laughs> get to it. I was thinking about Cafe Kilimanjaro, but uh, I'm not sure if I'll see that one. I Something about it did not grab me like that. I want to see the film The Gangster's Daughter because that looks fun. Um, and it's a film, darn it. I mean, it's only two hours, but I haven't been able to. I looked at Dating in the Kitchen, which um, I wanted to see. And then as I was watching the first episode, I realized that it is like a movie. It's exactly the movie. It's like, it's like somebody made a series and then they did the movie and I saw the movie version of it. So, and it's basically about this woman who's a chef and how she falls in love with the owner of the the restaurant you know so that's cute and i want to see mellow is my nature because everybody oh, including yes. song ray has talked it up ridiculously and speaking of having to rewind um and rewatch subtitles i think they're so droll and so witty and such a dry wit that I am clearly missing some stuff and I think that frustrates me but I'm definitely going to watch that I stopped watching to all the guys who loved me it seemed interesting oh Jesus did you watch that did you see it you know I finished it you know I finished it oh okay and great because I wanted to finish that thing but it started to get on my nerves I know, I know. And so I like kind of just, it just faded. Like I, I haven't gotten to the end. It was just like, sometimes when you have bad, the bad guy, in this case, the the grown version of the, the girl who was checking for dude back in the day and she trying to marry him off to her daughter because she crazy, she cray cray. She not even just crazy, she cray cray. Um, it just, <laughs> yes, I was just Lord, like, I'm was. tired. I was just like, I'm tired of you. Like, what? So I think I'm at the final episode or at final two or something like that. I just just haven't put in the time and the effort that I should. Um, so there's a lot. There's a lot. I wanted to see Fix You because it has um, Jung Soo Min. And I loved, loved, loved her in... Um, 
what do you call it? Well, she was in What's Wrong with Secretary Kim, but I loved her most in Because This Is My First Life. I love, love, love. I wish I could have done a review, but it's almost like you have to go rewatch that because there's so many twists and turns to it. Um, so I wanted to enjoy that, but I'm not feeling that show either. So I've just listed a whole bunch of stuff and talked for a long time. Songray, what are you watching and what do you enjoy? <laughs> Currently, I am watching Alice mm. of Amanda. So how is Alice? Have you heard of Alice? Okay. So I'm going to tell you, I personally feel like the first, because I'm on episode 10, if I'm not mistaken right now, um, the first half, so first maybe eight, mm -hmm. was great. I was in it. I was feeling it. I was there. Um, 10 has, has like, yeah, oh, you know what, it's 11, is, no, because 11 hasn't come out, so 10, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna say up to, like, 8, I was great, it was, I was feeling it, I was in it, then they had this, like, weird thing begin to happen, I'm not gonna tell you, but those of us who've been watching it have kind of talked it out, and we're, some people are, like, on the team, Oh, it's not that bad. Other people are like, it's fucking disgusting. And other people are going, well, if they keep going, I'm going to have to stop. So like, it's kind of like in between for me right now. I've watched up to 10, but I'm still feeling like it's just going, it's, it's almost like they had an excellent idea, excellent production, like all of that. Now I don't feel like the first production has fallen off, but like they've just taken a storyline and they're doing too much with it. And it's making the drama not be as much fun as it was. Yeah. So like, um, there's six more to go. I'm probably going to finish because I want to know how it ends and I want to see if he's going to wind up being the guy who they said he's going to be and he's going to stop time travel from happening, but we shall see. That's Alice. Um, Amanza, guy who has stomach cancer and mm. he is dealing with the, the effects. But what makes it a little odd, because it's another odd one, school nurse files in this could kind of flow together except for at least Amanza has a solid plot that goes with the crazy. School Nurse Files didn't have a solid plot for me. But mm -hmm. Amanza, <clears throat> when he goes to do his uh, chemotherapy, he goes into this cartoon land and you're wow. learning about how he's dealing with it through the cartoon land. And then he comes back into, you know, his real life and you're seeing the people he's dealing with, his friends, his uh, girlfriend that he tried to break up with and she was like yeah you know you gotta be out your mind if you thought you were gonna break up with me because you got cancer no I don't care if it's uh, lethal because they basically told him he's gonna die mm. um, I don't care if it's lethal I'm still gonna stick this out with you to the very end so we gonna walk this out together and it's only I've only seen up to episode three I have no clue how many are out but I've only seen up to episode three um, I'm watching do you like Brahms mm -hmm. I'm loving that I told you about that um, Lonely Enough to Love, I started it, but it's just, I don't know, it's, it's not catching me. Like, I'm, I'm trying to get caught because... What, is lonely, what is Lonely so Enough to Love about? So you have this chick, she's uh, an aspiring author. She wants to be an author, but she's basically been someone who's just done, like, the cleanup work. She goes in, she cleans up uh, novels for other authors and returns them, and she works for a company the guy who was using her to do that work had like basically mistreated her and she you know what i think i started watching that he played her to the left right girl yes <laughs> didn't give her creds for any of her work dogging her out yeah like she walked out and then realized something went back heard him dog dogging her out when she'd been like saving his butt so she was mm -hmm. like deuces i don't want to be up in this yeah why did i stop watching that because it's weird I don't know oh. what it is about it, but it's, I don't know. It's, it's, I can't name and say, oh, it's the plot or it's this or it's that. It's something weird about it that I just can't keep, keep up with it. I've gotten up to episode five. I like the doctor. I like her, but something about the show just ain't holding me. So wait, know, what is it called again? Lonely Enough to Love. Yeah. Let me go look that up. And they're staying in this like cool kind of housing place where it's uh, shared 
So they each have their own apartments, and I think there's a kitchen in there. I'm not 100% oh. sure if it is or is it. But they have, like, this oh. shared kitchen area, shared living space, and they, you know, do communal communal stuff. So, like, you, the dude who owns it cooks breakfast every day for everybody. You know, stuff like that. You know what? I did want to watch that. I started it, and the reason why I stopped watching it was because either in the first or se- second episode, she was treating dude so rudely. Like there was well, because she saw something that made her think he was a woman abuser. Right, right. I remember, but my thing is, they didn't. She didn't even give him a chance to talk it out or say anything. And I just no. didn't like. You know, I hate a show where people don't say the things they need to say right away. Like, yeah. And then she was just being so bitchy to him. The problem is the audience knows better, right? And so then you're just waiting for the miscommunication to be resolved. And it just kept on happening. It just got on my nerves. And it did. It went on for a little too long before they finally cleared that up. Right. And so I was just like, I can go do something else until she comes back and then feels stupid. And he's super patient. Like in this one and in the, the, the other one that he was in, that I just mentioned about the um all the men I've loved or whatever. He He's plays not in that. Yeah, he is. Uh-uh. Yeah, homie. That's not the same actor. Um, let's oh, you you guys are now hearing and seeing You're live right, what we right. do sometimes. <laughs> where, <laughs> where we be like, it's like battle is the actor who we think it is. Okay. So the actor. Let me You're talking him. about the guy who's the psychiatrist, right? Yes, the guy who is the psychiatrist. Okay, his I'm... name is Ji Hyun Woo. J I H U. I mean H W H Y U N W O O. Ji Hyun Woo. But wait, let me let me see something. Let me see something. Okay. Yeah, Matt, you right. But I swear he looks like him. I swear. And I don't even say that because that's super disrespectful. I'm not even talking about what's the name of the show again? Because good knows. Lonely something, too lonely old. hearts, <laughs> lonely, lonely enough, enough to love. Lonely enough <laughs> to love, yeah. Because when lonely I lonely hearts. Yeah. Yeah, he it is different. It is, it is different. It totally is. It's like I looked at the picture, the background of um, I'm coming up with an excuse, right? Y'all are like, you lost. You just need to own it. Okay, I do own it. I was completely <laughs> wrong. But the the guy who the the picture that's behind that's the background of the Vicky like first page covers his uh, face, and it's just like I okay. it's like I added features to this guy. But when I look at it, yeah, because he's kind of wily and funny, and like yes, you know, I really liked his vibe. And so when she's I all did like. Too. When she's all sticking the mud and funky to him and stuff, I'm like, okay, if, even if you think he is like a woman beater and stuff, can you let him finish his statement so that you know without a doubt? Well, like, aside from that, the woman tried to tell her too, and she was not hearing it. Right, and that I don't like yeah, that kind of character. In her mind, that she was this is what it was because of what she thought she saw. So you know, right, and I don't. But, it's it's one thing if someone does her wrong because I'm all writing for the victim, right? But I'm like, chick, if you just so immovable and you're so sure, eh, I don't like those kind of characters. Like I don't where the confusion is just because you don't know how to bend a little bit. It's, mm, that's all right. Yeah, and and there's a few other places in the drama where her character is not not as desirable as it could be but like I said overall I'm giving her a, a like because I feel like you know she's out here trying she's hustling trying to become this author she's you know making moves to make that happen for herself but she's also extremely oblivious to the shit that should be obvious like you ought to be able to see some of the stuff you're not seeing and that's that that is my lady okay I don't know about you so yeah right now that's one of my I'm halfway in, halfway in, like doing, uh, what is it, double dutch, and I'm getting ready to jump in, and I can't <laughs> to jump into this. <laughs> what else? So, Record of Youth I'm watching. I am loving that Park Ogum <laughs> drama. He's a model, and he's trying to take his modeling career to the next level, and thus far, I'm on episode six, thus far, he has been struggling, but 
past two episodes, he's kind of gotten some hits that are kind of working in his favor, and it's not through his friend, because his friend is like a model as well. They grew up together. He's a model as well, but he's much more successful in terms of what the viewer sees and not what's really happening. So when me, and then when I say viewer, I'm not even talking about us, the viewer, but viewer, like in the world, we all know that things are not always what they see. So you might think, oh, this person is really, you know, hot. I keep hearing about them. Or, oh, they've got 20,000 followers. Well, sometimes they're paying for their followers. And mm-hmm. sometimes they're doing things that are not really 100% on board in order to get to this place or to get to these steps. And so his mom is that person. She's been paying for him to have followers, paying for him to, you know, using her name and her uh, status to get him roles and to tell people, you know, oh, no, don't do this, do this. So, you know, she's one of those kind of people and she's been doing that for him. And part of it means he looks like he's so much more successful than his friend when in reality, eh, they, they about tit for tat when it comes to the modeling concept. So I'm enjoying the show. There's a love interest. It is a, got your comedy. I mean, your romance in there as well. So I like that part. Um, We'll see where it goes. I don't, I don't know. The plot for the most part is just about his struggle for this job to, to be this top, model or wind up going to the military because he's of military age and they've sent him reminders mm. more than once right and and the thing I, is oh go on i'm sorry no you're fine go ahead no i was, I was just gonna say uh park Bo gum like i i liked him as an actor as early as encounter i'll say that that's where i really was like oh i love him because he's unassuming there's something quirky about him and mm-hmm. and I'm not saying youthful like he's young, but like there's something innocent or something earnest. Earnest maybe is a better word. There's something earnest about him and it comes off really well. And so I loved him in Encounter and that's why I was excited to watch Record of Youth. But I didn't really like the synopsis. I don't want to see people hustling like that. It didn't grab me. And then when I watched the part of the first episode I was just like eh I just didn't want to see someone get broke down and and working and struggling I just I don't I'm, I don't have time for it so I'm glad you like it I am I am um I was gonna say I think that might be the one thing that has made me cringe a couple times would just be that he is really really fighting for this his family's against it the industry is pretty much against it. He has a former agent who is like working against him. And it's just all these things that you're going, God damn, can he get a break? (laughs) Right. Especially since wasn't he famous once upon a time? Like, didn't he have some fame at some point? Yeah. Because that's how him and old girl meet because she's a fan, which I think is where this is going. And that's why for me, I'm going, yeah, I could kind of go with that kind of not is the concept of the fan becoming, because they're dating now, the concept of the fan becoming his girlfriend. Like, yeah, that's, you know, I don't know how often or never, if that ever happened, but yeah, you know. Anyway, next drama, Stranger. I'm watching Stranger. I'm enjoying Mm -hmm. Stranger. It's 2017 drama, but it was, it's good so far. I've only gotten up to three episodes, but it drove, like, pulled me in immediately. It put me also in the mindset of what's the one I told you I, man, Jisoo was in, I even made the TikTok about him because him with that beard, oh my gosh, I can't think of the name, oh, Matt, no, no, so no, you're no, watching, no. so you're watching the first season of Stranger? Yes, see, okay. season one, yes, 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 have you seen Stranger? Yes, because I'm on season two. Oh, cool, okay, and so what'd you think about it? So season one, because I love the actress Ben Duna, and I and mind you, Stranger sat in Netflix for a long time. I'm trying to remember how old it originally was. It's been 2017. Sitting, right. It's been sitting in there for a second, and I just gave it no play. I was like, nope, 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 nope. And then finally, I think I was bored, and so I was like, it's Ben Duna. I have to you know, I have to watch, like, let me do something. And I wanted him to be more brilliant. You know, like if it were an American show, he would have been like Sherlock Holmes, right? He would have been. You're talking more... about the, the lead detective? Right. 
I, it's it's oh, like he's the bomb. He is the bomb. But when I walked into it, I ex- I wanted him to have like I wanted him to be colder and sexier and like uh, more, you know, because he's he's unassuming. He's very robotic, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah. he he's missing. You know, he had like a low key lobotomy, right? <laughs> like he ain't. <laughs> it's not funny, but it's it's what went oh, down. Seriously, right? he did. See, I'm, yeah. I'm not. Right. When he was a kid, he was I'm very laughing because I'm like, I thought you were being funny, but oh no, it, when he was a kid, he was very like violent or something, or very whatever. Uh, and so they did this that would surgery. Some of those back things I saw. Okay. Right. And so they did this surgery and I think they like removed some pieces. And so he's very intelligent, but he suffers from these headaches all the time and he can't it's like his emotional button has been turned off so that's why he has a bad relationship with his family because he's not emotional he's he's not effusive like that's why when he deals with folks he's like a step off because he's like he doesn't have the Mm -hmm. emotional button turned on so I wanted it to be if it if it were an American show he would have been amped up even more right it would have been like he's the sexy guy but completely cold and at some point he'd have had a romance with Ben du, De, Dunas character like something would have gone something would have popped off but because it's a Korean drama and it's really like more law and order than like I don't know um, some kind of romance you know. <laughs> It really Mm -hmm. is about them solving the case. And first season, I loved. Once you get into it, it's cool. You know, you see it from different points of view. It's very interesting. I'm on season two. I would say if season one was an A, season two is like maybe a B, B minus. Because it's a good story. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you have to watch it. It's it's good. It keeps your attention. But see, this is the weird thing. I watched um, Stranger either before or after the show Signal. Signal is brilliant, brilliant. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So remember the movie? Remember the movie Frequency? Mm-hmm. Dennis Quaid. Where he like talks to his son through like um, a radio, like an old school. Yeah, radio. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's it's like that. It's like this young profiler ends up with this little radio, like police radio. He realized that he's talking to this guy like ten years before or something. I forget the time frame, and who who's also a detective. And the detective he talks to he's he starts talking to when he's about to die and the detective knows more about this guy than he knows he's like how do you know all this stuff about me he's like give my give me a message when when i call you back you give me this message and they start corresponding back and forth trying to find the killer of these women like in in south korea and like the 1990s or something like that so it really is okay. like a little bit of supernatural but you have a cool female lead who's on her super hustle you got the profiler who no one likes but he's found and determined to solve the case it was stellar i loved it and it definitely left room for a sequel and they were supposed to start filming the sequel or finishing it or something but covid happened so i'm waiting because i because everybody loves signal everybody loves signal so i was watching okay. those i was watching those two shows around the same time and they started to bleed in my head so i love them both they're like the same way um, okay but yeah, so what do you think about Stranger so far? Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. So far, I'm digging it. I'm really, really, really enjoying it. And like I said, the first episode caught me. I happen to like dramas where sometimes we're not necessarily, because I love a rom-com. I love it. Of course. Seriously, I do. However, I am also aware and very mindful of the fact that <clears throat> sometimes dealing with those, you are dealing with stuff that you know, you get into the heart situations and things like that. So I can also enjoy, and I also enjoy dramas where there are no relationships, things involved. So that's why I'm 
enjoying sick or stranger right now because I'm liking that it's one of those words not necessarily that you're solving crime. So I think in my past life or something, I must have been a crime solver or some sort, like a detective or whatever, because I, I enjoy that kind of stuff. That makes me go, oh wow, let's let's see who did it, who done it. So you know, right. like yeah. <laughs> Those are those are interesting to me, so I'm enjoying the show so far. And like I said, when the first episode catches me, then you pretty much got me. Like I might push through a first episode, for instance, School Nurse Files, and I might push through an episode <laughs> because so I've got ulterior motives. But when you, I'm un- un- unassumingly walking in and I get caught, yeah, I like that. So right so, now it's a nine, and I've only watched three episodes in my mind. Okay. Nine. So what else are you watching? The last two current watches would be uh, When I Was Most Beautiful, um, another drama that I'm in the jump rope trying to decide, do I finish or do I just get out of this game? Because, yeah. Um, This was because of Jisoo, actor Jisoo. I really love him. And I was a new drama for him, and I wanted to watch it. He, again, was a second lead, which was driving me a little batty he's really the main lead but uh, he's not getting the love interest again he's his brother married the girl and his brother went missing because they thought he was dead for seven years and he returns and now he's accusing the brother or the wife and him of being together and it's just drama 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 unnecessarily drama so yeah right and I saw I I started watching that and after the first episode I was good (laughs) okay now what made you put it down um, because it just was, I didn't, it started from the point of view of uh, Jisoo's character. Mm-hmm. So I automatically was partial to him. And then they showed the brother, which told me that the brother was at least going to be a secondary lead. And she's too, um, wishy-washy to me. And I think that she may have like something about the trailer, something about what I saw made me think that maybe she was leading him on in a weird kind of way. Um, like not, not being really. clear initially. Like you can correct me. There you go. But there you go. Cause I would say she didn't necessarily lead him on at all, but she's not clear about a whole lot of things. And that's right. half of why her characters her character, one of them care like her as the actress and she, where in my mind, what I've seen of her, she plays these types of roles where she comes across as like, could you just spit it out? Could you just, even in my ID is Gangnam Beauty. I, I don't know. I, I'm She's on the offense for me. But right. Ahead. She's, she's, you know what? Okay. So I'm sure we've talked about this before and I have to really use my phone to like give you examples, like be really on it. But there are actors and actresses who play to type. And she plays this kind of winsome, quiet beauty. I think she played something like the geisha type in in one drama. Let me pull up what she's played in. She always plays kind of quiet and unassuming and everything is happening to her. Right. She always plays that kind of role. Graceful Um, Family, that's the other drama I saw her in and I wasn't feeling that either. I think I saw Five Enough as well. Okay, the woman in Five Enough, the mother in Five Enough, she also does the same thing. She always plays like a wife or something like that who is put upon and cheated on. Like there are these actresses who always play the downtrodden underdog wife or girlfriend or something like that. Like they play to type and that is fine. Make your money. Like people are used to seeing you in those roles. I'm happy for you. But the wife in Five Enough is Su Ju Jin. And she also did My Healing Love. Like she does stuff where she's misunderstood and she's hardworking and earnest. And it's the same thing with I'm Su Hang, who's the female lead in When I Was the Most Beautiful. I forget what the name of that, I'm going to look it up and find it. New Tales of the Ginseng. I'm calling her Geisha. I'm so wrong. You know, Um, I'll clean that up in post-production. Hello. (laughs) Um, But (laughs) she, she played in New Tales of Ginseng. I loved, loved that drama. 
okay? It's like hmm. great drama. But she does that saying, I can't speak, I'm scared, I'm meek, you know, I'm just confused. Like even when she looks at you, she lo- or looks at the characters, she's looking at characters like, I don't know how to put two words together. Blip, 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 blip. That gets on my nerves. So yeah. that's why I didn't watch it. <laughs> That's why I didn't watch. And I, I hear you because I like a strong, like, and I think maybe because, again, we may pick characters based upon who we are in real life. <laughs> right. I know that sounds a little crazy, but hey, um, I like a stronger female lead, someone who's going to stand up for themselves, speak out, and not just be, I don't want to say the word submissive because I don't necessarily think that's a form of, submiss- of submission. I think submission comes in a lot of ways, but I also feel like you can't always just let stuff happen. You got to speak up sometimes and you have to say what's what or say what you feel because I feel like in this drama when I was most beautiful, she's kind of just gone along with things as opposed to standing up and saying, here's where I am and here's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because like even the marriage, the marriage feels more like it was put upon her than her choosing, yes, I want to be with you and I love you. Right. Did she ever tell the man she loved him? I don't know. I can't go back and say, I heard her say those words, but you know, moving on. You're completely right. Some of it is a function of maybe it's cultural. Maybe it's us and our personalities. By cultural, I was thinking like both African-American and American, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like you have to say something. You have to speak up. You can't just sit back and watch and let stuff happen. Right. It's like, oh yeah, I'm a victim. It's oh, I didn't really want this. Well, why didn't you say something? Why did it take you like two episodes to finish one thought? No, I can't. And so I kind of knew walking in what kind of character she was going to play and I'm okay with that. But I just had a feeling like she wasn't going to do right by the younger guy. And I just, yeah. and it was going to be convoluted and I don't, I don't really want that. Just to speak to one of the shows yet again that I love, 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 they had the Coffee Prince reunion, right? Yes. That is my kind of character or characters. They say things. They are emphatic. They feel things. They fight for them. There's no confusion about chick trying to hustle her way to support herself. She's completely different ballgame. I always wanted a season two for that, and it hurts my heart that they never did it, but I'm glad that they did the um, reunion. Yeah. And it's always gung you. Woo woo. So, <laughs> you know. Um, final watch for me is Zombie Detective. Um, mm. I just started that this past Friday. Um, I was not really interested in zombies. You know me. I obviously have watched a few more horror slash uh, zombie ghost dramas in recent years than ever. But I watched it because really was it Choi Jin Hook yes okay yes. yeah because I was about to say why were you trying to watch a drama you don't want to watch but when I saw who the lead was yeah 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 I was gonna say not because I didn't want to watch it per se because it was a kind of interesting concept in my mind of hmm, a zombie detective how's that gonna work like that did draw me in but then he was the of course overall yeah I'm going on into this and let's see what happens Right. As a secondary lead, I have always, always, always enjoyed him. He is great eye candy. He's a, you know, Mm -hmm. good actor. I liked him in Pasta. I've always, I really liked him in Airs. It's like, there's some other dramas, actually, now that I'm looking at his list that I'm like, "Hmm, I need to check those out because I'm seeing Devilish Joy. And I started watching one of those episodes and I don't know what the hell happened. Like, did something happen? I don't like it. Rose Island, I was going to watch that, but I did, like, I I started, let me just go there, I did start it. I watched episode one, like, halfway through, and I was like, yeah, this is doing too much, and I can't. It was over the top. Um, I've seen him in the Flower Crew, Joe Sang Marriage Agency. He was only a guest, though. I saw him in, you just mentioned one of it. What was it? Airs? Airs, definitely. I saw him in in Emergency Couple, Fated to Love You. Um, Oh, you know why I didn't like Devilish Joy? She seems stupid. She got on my nerves. I can't watch it when the woman is silly. And silly in the wrong way. Was it Gamu Young? Let me check. 
But I, mm-hmm. I do want to see, I see I Need Romance, I don't remember. Cause see, I've seen him in a number of things, but there's this one called Pride and Prejudice that is a romance and a Korean drama. That looks Was interesting. Good? No, girl, I haven't seen it yet. I've seen it a few times pop up on things, but I've never watched it and I really hadn't heard anybody speak on it. But you just called it out again, maybe go, maybe I need to watch that. Yeah, I may have to check that out because that's a nice mix. The romance and, okay, so real talk. I like those kind of corporate dramas, you know, those law dramas. I like, I like all that stuff. I won't. I won't blindly watch any of them, but if they have a little bit of romance, that's why I think I liked Hyena, because when it has that combination, it makes me happy. Oh, I'm waiting for secretly, but I may have to write it because I don't know where it exists. I want to see a corporate drama with romantic elements that involves vampires. I know Mm. that's weird. I I read this book, This Case Is Gonna Kill Me. I can't even say the writer's name because it's like Russian is really hard or it's it's not really hard but it's long or something but she started off kind of with those elements and now it's stuck in my head like I want to see corporate vampires and <laughs> I'm crazy as I get out this has nothing to do with Asian dramas but if I ever see this Asian drama trust and believe y'all I will talk about that drama the way Sung Ray talks about um, Uduan. <laughs> I will talk about that drama the way Sung Ray talks Jesus. about Uduan. So, mm. anyway. Oh, Panda and Hedgehog. He was in that too. I saw Panda and Hedgehog. Ah, yes. And you know what? How was that? Because it always pops up. Panda and Hedgehog was all right. And it's like a, it's supposed to be like a classic, you know, like a classic y, cutesy. And it is. It totally is. She's um, on her hustle because she's a baker, cook, whatever. She meets a guy. They have this this situation going on and finally she chooses said guy and they go on their merry way. I mean, but it's a cute drama. It's a cute drama. I liked it. Well, uh, speaking of cute dramas, um, and maybe this is a call out, like maybe you know Song Rae, maybe it's a call out to others. And I've said it on, I think, Twitter. I am fiending for a new... Uh, now, if if this were a book or on Amazon or something, they call them reverse harems. That's what they call it when you kind of have one female character and a number of male interests. But you know how, like, with Boys Over Flowers, it's like I'm looking for another Boys Over Flowers. A couple of years ago, it was Cinderella and the Four Nights. Like I'm looking for yeah. a new drama like that and I can't find it. I was hoping so if it would anybody be anybody Cap- out there knows. Right. I was hoping it would be Cafe Kilimanjaro, but I'm I'm getting the feeling that it's not. I have to see, I have to keep on. But I'm feeling. I laughed when you put that out there because part of my current watches, but these are rewatches. I am watching Boys Over Flowers. <laughs> right. Because right. I just was in the mode. I know, like, I hear people say terrible things about this drama, and it is what it is, but this was one of my favorite dramas back in the day, and yeah, every now and again, I do a rewatch just to go, oh, curly head, on you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's like, every couple of years, they hook a sister up. Like, they, <laughs> they give you that so that you can get your fix of being the only girl in the in a room full of boys woo 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 you know I'm silly I know right but um it hasn't happened for a while and so I'm in search I'm ever in search so if you all have any suggestions I mean generally suggestions for shows to watch because we still need to do a review of um Secretary Kim and I will (laughs) I will finish that one day but uh, if you have anything that is similar to Boys Over Flowers, I would love Are we you. talking, it has to be K-drama or, because, you know, they have remakes. They just redid Meteor Garden is, I think, the Chinese version of Boys Over Flowers. I've seen that. that. I've seen, I've okay. seen every version. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Before You're the better Korean than me, because no. I've seen every version. And I think I even saw, like, the new parts of the new version of whatever recent came out in the last what year or two or whatever 
I've seen them all. The first ver version I saw, I think, was the, the real Japanese version. Yeah, because you told me about it. I didn't watch what you told me about it. Right. I saw two versions before the Korean version. Wow. That's why the curly hair threw me off. <laughs> I was like, I've already <laughs> seen this guy look different. <laughs> That's why I'm mad about there not being an American version, because I saw the version where she was the swimmer. I saw the version... What was the one for the Koreans? What was she? Because each one she was, she was like, hmm? she was a swimmer in the Korean version. Okay, so she was something else. Like maybe she played an instrument or something. Like in each version, she had a different interest. So that's why for the Americanized version, I want her interest to be um, that she wants to produce music and she needs the leverage of being at that school to help her future career. Because I want her to be very savvy and street smart and know different languages. Like, I want her to be, like, a child of America. And I want her to be biracial. I want her to be, like, Puerto Rican and something else. She's an insider in America, but when she walks into that world, she's an outsider because she's too mixed up for them. She's not one thing, and that's what's recognizable to them. So I just have it all in my head. <laughs> Because I'm crazy. You, you might need to just make that happen. I mean, I need to, yeah, write that stuff down. Yeah, I think I've written a lot of it down. So it's like, I don't have to memorize it or, or forget it or anything like that. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. So um, we're so, rambling right now, but yeah, you talk. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, we could go ahead, I think, and wrap it up we've got our current watches if you're watching any of these dramas if you have any comments on what we've discussed if you saw school nurse files and you thought it was the bomb.com mm. whatever the case please comment talk let us know how you feel we would love to discourse with you so discourse oh good for you <laughs> <laughs> please look out for us wherever you can and we look to see you in cyberland yep this is something else and song ray have a good one you guys bye thank you so much for listening to black girl soul we enjoyed having you and please subscribe like and follow our facebook page youtube channel twitter page instagram page and join our facebook group you can also find us on patreon please look below for links see you guys next week